Alright guys, welcome to the Algebra 2K quad test review. Alright, so on numbers numbers 1 and 2, graph the following functions, state the transformations, give the domain and range. So on number 1, let's get the transformations first. So we have a 1 half in the front, that's telling us vertical compression by a half we have the one-third inside the parentheses squared so that is telling us a horizontal expansion by the reciprocal which is three also on the inside we have an x minus four since we have minus 4 on the inside, that is telling us to move right 4 units. And then we have a plus 1 on the outside, so that means this is going to shift up 1 unit. Alright, so we stated the transformations. Now let's look at the graph. Alright, so by looking at the function, my h and k are telling me that the vertex is going to be at 4, 1. So let's put the vertex at 4, 1. It's going to be a, a parabola that open up, up, it's going to open upward since we have a positive A value. Alright, so let's plug this into the calculator and let's skip the table. Alright, so we got 1 half parentheses one-third parentheses x minus four close parentheses squared then plus one All right second table All right so let's go to the vertex Alright, so the vertex was at 4, 1. Now let's try to find another point that fits on the graph. So we have, okay, let's put 7, 1.5. So 7, 1.5, that's going to go right there. Let's see if anything else fits. We got 10, 3. So let's put that point, 10, 3. So that means there should be those same points on the other side. So we got 1, 1 1.5. And then we have negative 2, 3. Alright, so try to get at least 5 points when you, when you put your graph on here. So once I have my points, just sketch your parabola. All right. So then for our for our domain, this is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, and then for the range, which is bottom up we start at 1 and then it keeps going up to infinity so bracket 0 1 or to, sorry bracket 1 to infinity so bracket 1 to infinity alright so then for number 2 um, same thing. We're going to graph this. So before we get the transformations or anything, we need to put this in graphing form. Right now, this part isn't in graphing form. we got to factor out the 3. So this becomes y equals negative 2, parentheses, 3, parentheses, x minus 2, and then close parentheses and close an with another parentheses for the squared, and then minus 2. 
Right, so then for our transformations, we have a reflection over the x-axis. We have a vertical expansion by two. Right, we have the three on the inside, so that's going to be a horizontal compression by one third. We have the x minus 2 on the inside, so that's telling us to move right 2, and then we're going to go down 2. All right, so based off the function and the transformations, we know that the vertex is going to be at 2, negative 2. And then we also know it should be upside down because of the reflection over the x. All right, so we could plug this function into the calculator and get the rest of the points. All right, so you could plug in the original one or the one after you factored out the three, you still get the same points. All right, so go to the table, locate your vertex. We said the vertex was at two, negative two, and then you could also tell that because if you look at the y, y values, they start repeating in each direction after the vertex and below the vertex. Alright, so looking at these points, none of these are going to fit on the graph, so we're going to have a really narrow parabola. Alright, so if you look at 1 and 3, the point is at negative 20, so we're not even going to, yeah, we're not even going to cross over to this side, it's just going to be really narrow. Right, so we have a really narrow parabola. Right, it's still going to have a domain of negative infinity to infinity. It's, it's always going to slightly move towards negative infinity, always slightly going to go towards positive infinity. And then for the range, since the graph is upside down, it's going to begin at negative infinity, and then as you move your way up, it stops at negative 2. So now for the bottom. So on the bottom it says adjust the parent function equation f of x equals x squared to satisfy the following requirements. All right, so on number three we have a domain of all real numbers. We have a range of negative infinity to negative one. So this should be telling us that the graph is going to be opening down since it, the range is from negative infinity to negative one. We have a horizontal translation right 3, vertical stretch, which is just another way of saying vertical expansion by a factor of 3 and reflected over the x-axis. All right, so let's write down this equation. Again, this is an e it's going to be in an equation, so don't forget to put a y equals or f, f of x. So I'm going to put y equals. All right, we have reflection over the x-axis, so we should be starting off with a negative. Vertical expansion by 3. All right, so now let's move inside. So parentheses squared. Inside, we want the graph to move right two, so we have to put x minus two on the inside. And then, again, based off the range, this is telling us two things. The graph is gonna be upside down, and if you look at it from bottom up, it's gonna stop at negative one. So that means that this graph um, the vertex should be at 2, because we went 2 right, and then down negative 1, so minus 1. Right, so this graph should go, again, right 2, down 1, and it's going to be upside down. All right, so now let's do the same thing on number four. We have a domain of all real numbers. Range is negative four to infinity. So since we're at negative four to infinity, this is gonna be, gonna be opening up. So it's gonna have a positive A. We're gonna move left one, horizontal compression by a fourth. All right, so horizontal and vertical stretch by a factor of five. All right, so don't forget to put the Y equals. So Y equals, 
we have a vertical expansion of 5 parentheses squared. But also on the inside we have a horizontal compression by a factor so this should say of 1 fourth. Alright so that means again remember the inside is the opposite so on the inside we should have a 4. Alright so the B value is a 4 Again, if the B value, or if the 4 was on the outside, you would say vertical expansion by 4. But when you put it on the inside, it's the complete opposite. It's a horizontal compression by a fourth. All right, so then that's for the B value. But then we have another set of parentheses on the inside. That's going to be for the translation left 1. If you want to go left 1, we also need to have an X plus 1 on the inside. And then also based off the range, this should be... The range should be starting at negative 4 and then going up to infinity, so that means that there was a shift down 4. Alright, so that's the equation that meets those requirements for 3 and 4. Alright, so let's move on to the next page. Alright, so on number 5, the graph of y equals negative x squared plus 6x is shown. All right, so we already have the graph provided. It represents the relationship between the length of a rectangle and its area. Circle the point on the graph that shows the maximum area. All right, so this is the length of the rectangle. This is the area of the rectangle. All right, so the maximum area should be at this point right here. All right, so the maximum area would be 9 when the rectangle has a length of 3. All right, so we'll put 3 comma 9. That would be the maximum point, or which is also called the vertex. Um, what do we call this point of the parabola? So, I, so we just said that. That's the vertex. Or you could call it the maximum point. What are the dimensions of the rectangle with the maximum area? Alright, so what are the dimensions for the rectangle with the maximum area? Alright, so this would have to be... Alright, so I guess this really wouldn't make a rectangle, it would make more of a square. Alright, because if you have a rectangle with a length of 3, and you want the area to be 9, we know the area is length times width. If it's going to be 9, it must be 3 times 3, so it'll be a 3 by 3. So this would be a 3 by 3 for the dimensions. 3 for the length, 3 for the width. Alright, so for number 6, An object is fired straight up from the top of a 200 foot tower at a velocity of 80 feet per second. The height h of t of the object t seconds after firing is given by h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 18 t plus 200. All right, so they provided us the graph for that function. What are the domain and range of the function? All right, so when it says of the function, it's talking about the whole parabola. Alright, so the whole parabola, alright, so the whole function, if you were to put this in y equals, the whole parabola would have a domain of negative infinity to infinity. And then the range would have to be from negative infinity, since the parabola is going to be upside down, and it looks like it stops at 300 feet or three, just 300 alright so that would be the domain and range for the function but now for B it says what, it, what are the domain and range for the situation so now we're just looking at this as a real life situation for the domain and range alright so for the domain which represents time 
you're never going to have negative time. So for the domain for time, all right, so it is, it's going to have to start at zero, so bracket zero, and the time stops at 6.83 seconds. All right, so that would be the domain from zero to 6.83 seconds. All right, now let's do the same thing for the range. All right, so the object could either be on the ground, which is zero feet, or the highest point that it reached was 300 feet. So the range for this situation in real life would either have to be, or not either have to be, it has to be zero to 300. So that is the range for the height of the object. And again, if you see you see this word of the situation you're talking about the domain and real range in real life and if it just says function you're looking at the function as a whole all right so now for C find the maximum height recorded by the object and the time the height was recorded. All right, so the maximum height we said is going to be 300 feet, which is right there. That's the vertex for the maximum point. And this is going by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going by ones. So this would be right here, right in the middle. So one, two, three, it's right in the middle. So that would be 2.5 seconds. All right, so the maximum height would be at 2.5 comma 300 and we can interpret that as so in 2.5 seconds we reach a height of 300 feet that's 2.5 seconds for the time and 300 for the height So then for number seven, the height of a fountain's water stream can be modeled by the quadratic function. What is the maximum height of the fountain's water stream? All right, so the maximum height would just be at its vertex. All right, on the graph, we're comparing time and height. So the maximum height would be at seven, eight. So at eight, what is that, feet? Eight feet. Right, now for part B, highlight the part of the graph that shows where the fountain's water stream will be at least six feet in the air. So when will this be six feet in the air? All right, so we're at least six feet in the air right here. All right, so let's go to the next page. All right, so this is going to be on completing the square. All right, so for completing the square, um, some te teachers might do it differently than others. Um, the way I do it is I set it equal to zero and then go on from there. So, so my method is step one, set the equation equal to zero. Right, next, we're going to move the current C value. So we get x squared minus 16x, leave some space equals negative 48. All right, so I move the 48 to the other side, and I had to do that by subtracting 48. All right, next, we got to find the new C value, which is found using b divided by 2 squared. Right now, our b value is a negative 16. So we're, we're going to take negative 16 divided by 2 
and then square it. So negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. If I square that, we get 64. All right, so we're going to add 64 to both sides. I have to add 64 to both sides and then and then factor the left side. All right, so two numbers that multiply to 64 and add up to negative 16 are negative 8 and negative 8. So our two factors are x minus 8, x minus 8. Since the, both factors are the same, you can just write this as x minus 8 squared equals negative 48 plus 64. All right, so then again, just check that. Right, we get 16 and then move the 16 back to the other side. All right, so remember these are equations. So you, you've got it in vertex form, but an equation should always have y equals in front of them. y equals x minus 8 squared minus 16. All right, so this would be this equation in vertex form. And then now you could tell the transformations in the vertex. This would have a vertex at 8 comma negative 16. So next one, let's look at number, yeah, let's look at number nine. All right, so uh, another method that some people complete the square is this method. So just keep it y equals x squared plus 8x. And then give some space for the plus 7. Or give some space and then put plus 7. All right, now let's find our b value. So take 8 divided by 2, then square it, you get 4 squared, so that's going to be 16. So we're going to plus 16 here, but then for the other one, put minus 16. Right. This part right here, you can actually factor. This is a perfect square trinomial, so x squared plus 8x plus 16. Two numbers that multiply to 16 add up to 8 are x plus 4 squared, and then 7 minus 16, that multiplies to negative 9, so minus 9 at the end. All right, so this would equal negative 4 comma negative 9. All right, so the vertex would be at negative 4 comma negative 9. So let's go to number 10. Um, step one, set it equal to zero. All right, move your negative, or move the 11, which minus 11 to both sides. You get negative 11 on the right side. Leave some space. Now take your B value divided by two. You get negative three on the inside, but when you square it, you get back a positive nine. So plus nine both sides. That's going to look a little bit better. All right, so plus 9 both sides, and then factor the left side. So two numbers that multiply to 9 add up to negative 6 are x minus 3 and x minus 3, or is negative 3, but then you get two factors. So you put x minus 3 squared equals it's negative 11 plus 9. That would be negative 2 and then move your two to the other side. So you, your final answer is gonna be x minus three squared plus two. So then your vertex would be at three comma two. All right, next one, number 11. 
All right, for this one, I'm going to set it equal to zero. All right, so let's look at the numbers that we have for A, B, and C. We have 4, negative 32, and 16. Um, their GCF, or greatest common factor, would be a 4. So all of them can be divided by 4. So let's factor out a 4 from this. So if I factor out a 4 on the inside, we're left with x squared minus 8x plus 4, close parentheses, equals 0. Right, this 4 in the front, you could divide it to both sides. Right, 0 divided by 4 is still going to be 0. This just reduces to a 1. So now we have x squared equals 8x plus 4 equals 0. So now you can complete the square like you did 8, 9, and 10. All right, for this one, I'm going to use the other method. Oh, here, let's just... Here, I'll just do my method. So subtract the 4. You get negative 4 on this side. All right, find your B value. So take negative 8 divided by 2. Square it. You get negative 4 squared, which equals 16. So plus 16, plus 16. All right, factor this. This time we have a minus 8 on the inside of 16. So that would be X minus 4 squared equals positive 12. But then when you move your 12, you end up with Y equals x minus 4 squared minus 12. Right, so let me write that right here. y equals x minus 4 squared minus 12. All right, so then your vertex would be at 4 comma negative 12. So that's completing the square. And again, there's different methods. So your teacher might have done it differently than I did. All right, so for 12, 13, and 14, determine whether each data set could be represented or could represent a quadratic function. So explain. So this is where we use um, second differences. All right, so on number 12, so let's take the second difference. How do I get from 16 to 8? You have to minus 8. How do I get from 8 to 0? Minus 8. How do I get from 0 to negative 8? Minus 8. Negative 8 to negative 16, and minus 8. So since the first difference had, or since the first difference was all the same, this would be linear. All right, so this one is not going to be the quadratic. All right, so let's look at this one. 1 to 3, you have to plus 2. 3 to 9, you have to plus 6. 9 to 27, plus 18. 27 to 81, well, that would be plus 54. All right, so that's the first difference. Now let's check the second difference. 2 to 6, plus 4, 6 to 18, plus 12, 18 to 54. That's plus 30. Hold on, let me check. Sorry, kind of tired, so I can't do math in my head right now. 36. All right, so by looking at this, we know the second difference isn't going to be the same. So then we obviously know this one is not going to be quadratic either. All right, so it's not going to be 13. It's not going to be 12. All right, so let's check 14. All right, 4 to negative 5, you would subtract 9. Negative 5 to negative 8, you would subtract 3. 
Okay, now negative 8 back to negative 5, you would add 3. Negative 5 to 4, you would add 9. All right, so that's the first difference. Let's check the second difference. Negative 9 to negative 3, you would have to add 6. Negative 6 to positive 3, add 6. 3 to 9, add 6. So the second difference has the same thing. So this one would end up being this one would be the quadratic. Yeah, so this one would, rep would represent the quadratic data. All right, so then on 15, find the quadratic function containing the given ordered pairs. All right, so this one is going to be a quadratic problem. All right, so let's go to stat, edit. All right, so our x values are 10, 20, negative 30. Our y values are 1, 22, negative 3. So go to stat, calc, quad reg, which is option 5. And then you get your a, b, and c. All right, so this would be y equals... We have 0.04x squared, so that's the A. Then we got plus 0.9x, that's the B. And then for the C, we got minus 12. All right, so same thing on 16, stat, edit. We have negative 4, 2, 0. And then for the Y values, negative 37, 11, negative 1. So this one has an A value of negative a half, so negative 0.5x squared. Then we got plus 7b, or plus 7, sorry, plus 7x, and then minus 1 at the end. So A, B, and C. Alright, so let's go to the next page. So the last page is on focus and directrix. All right, so it says find the equation of a parabola with the given properties. So remember, the equation should be in vertex form, a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. And then to find the a value, it's 1 over 4p. All right, so let's look at this. So we have a focus. So let's kind of sketch this. I have a focus at 0, negative 5. I have my directrix at y equals 5. All right, the vertex should be right directly in between the focus and directrix. So since the directrix is at y equals 5 and the focus is at 0, negative 5, right now these two have a distance of 10 in between them and the vertex should be directly in the middle. So if I take half the distance, which half of 10 would be 5, I would end up at the vertex. So if I go half a distance of 5 from the focus, and then I go this way trying to find the vertex, I would go from 0, negative 5, and then I end up at 0, 0. So the vertex on this one is at 0, 0 and then it's going to open downward and so that's telling us that the a value should be negative alright so the direction for the vertex or the directrix would be negative 5 so p equals negative 5 alright so now we have the vertex 0 0 we have the p value Let's use the p-value to find the a, and then again, we, are, we already have the h and the k on this one. Alright, so 1 over 4 times negative 5 would give us 1 over negative 20. 
Right, so that would be the new A value, negative 1 over 20. All right, so this equation would end up being y equals negative 1 over 20 x squared. And it's just x squared because the vertex is at 0, 0. So the h is 0 and the k is also 0. This focus is. All right, there it goes. All right, so now for number 18, the focus would be at 2, 6. So let's just kind of sketch that. So it would be at 2, 6. And then the directrix would be at negative 8. All right, so same thing. We have the focus and the directrix, but we don't know, we don't know the vertex. So that would be directly in the middle. So take the current distance and then just cut it in half and then use that to find the vertex. So right now the distance between this point and the directrix. So right now we have a distance of eight here and then it goes up six. So eight and six together, those make 14. Cut that in half, you get a distance of seven. So if I go a distance of seven from the directrix to the Inside, I'm going to end up at the vertex, or you can start at the focus, go seven units inside, and then you end up at the vertex also. So the vertex would be somewhere right here, which would be at two negative one. So vertex is at two comma negative one. All right, so the vertex is directly in between the focus and the directrix. So now we have the H and K. Now we're just missing the A. We just said that the distance here would be 7, so the p-value is 7. Alright, so 1 over 4 times 7, so on the bottom we get 28. Alright, so for this equation we get y equals 1 over 28. We have an h of 2, so x minus 2 on the inside squared and then minus one on the outside. All right, so now number 19, this time we have the vertex and the focus. All right, then for the last one, you can tell it's gonna go up. All right, so for number 19, Vertex is at zero, zero, focus is at zero, negative six. All right, for the vertex and the focus, just by how they're positioned, since this is the focus, it's always going to be inside the parabola. I know this is going to be opening downward, so this should have a negative A value. Also, the direction would be at negative six. So so P equals negative 6. So A equals 1 over 4 times negative 6, which equals negative 1 over 24. All right, so this equation would just be Y equals negative 1 over 24 X squared. And that's because the H and the K are both 0, 0. All right, then for number 20, same thing. So negative 2, 1, negative 2, a half. All right, so this one's going to also open down, and the p value would be negative a half. All right, so we got 1 over 4. I guess we say negative 0.5. Negative half times 4 should be negative 2. So the A value is negative 1 half. And then our vertex is x plus 2. So negative 2 and 1, so plus 2 on the inside, squared plus 1 on the outside.
right, so last one, number 21. Find the vertex axis and the axis of symmetry focus in the direction of the parabola with the equation y minus 4 equals negative 1 half x minus 8 squared. All right, so right now we need to move this minus 4 to the other side so we could have it, um, so we could have it in actual vertex, in graphing form. So that's what we're going to use. So the vertex would be at 8, positive 4. Um, also, if you know the vertex, you know that the x, you know the axis of symmetry. It's just the x value of the vertex. So x equals 8. All right. So then, what we're missing is the focus and directrix. If we want to find the focus and directrix, we need the p-value. Alright, so the p-value can be found using a 1 over 4p. Right now our current a is negative 1 half. All right, so that since both of these are a values, you can just set them equal to each other. So since they're both a, you can do 1 over 4p equals negative 1 half. All right, then you could cross multiply. You get 4p equals, or negative 4p equals 2. Right, divide the negative 4, we get p equals 2 over negative 4, which reduces to negative 1 half. All right, so the p value is going to be negative 1 half. All right, so now let's use that to find... Sorry, let's use that to find the focus in the directrix. All right, so looking at this equation, we know that the graph is going to be moving down. So if I go a distance of negative a half, so that means I'm going to go down a half from the vertex, we end up at the point 8, 3.5. So that's going to be the focus, 8, comma, 3.5. All right, now if we go the same direction but go outside the parabola, we end up at 4.5. That's going to be our directrix, which is a horizontal line at y equals 4.5. All right, so that is the end of the review video. And have a great day. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe.